Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for joining me. Now, this is a Liquid Smooth ROM preview running on a Nexus 6. Now, it is available with Android version 5.0.2. They do come out with daily updates. And one of the great things about this ROM is it does have an OTA update process that you can use. And you can go ahead and do manual updates or you can set it specifically with the options available. So really, really nice features with this ROM right out of the package. You can, in fact, see that it is using a dark material type theme, which is going to use a little bit less battery power as well. So very nice. They do have a liquid smooth menu, and in that menu you have an equalizer, you have the interface navigation, notification status bar, and advanced menu options. And through here, you can actually set a notif or excuse me, a equalizer to use specifically for your USB dock, Bluetooth devices, the phone speakers itself, or a headset of your choice. So you can go in here and set everything accordingly based on those devices. Pretty cool. Um, you do have an interface menu and you can change your DPI settings in the LCD density. Uh, the default on the Nexus 6, so you are aware, is roughly 493, but you can set this to whatever specific value you want. Now, the one I use currently that you see here and that I find to be the sweet spot is exactly 500 dpi and you can go in here and you can play with it until you find something you like um, i recommend 500 or 520 it, it makes it look nice it's readable it's legible it's not too small 490 or anything lower is just way too small and you will have to in fact reboot the device for it to take effect once you change those values so be aware of that uh, you do have system animations you can go in here and change um, all these animation effects if you want to you have a nice list of options to choose from and you can change the animation duration um, for those specific animations as well at the bottom you can also change the list view animation and there's some decent settings there as well you do have the ability to go into your recents or your multitasking and you'll notice i don't have a google search bar on the top you can disable or enable that right here as now you can see there is a search bar at the top. So very cool option there in the interface option. And you can go in here and you can customize your clock and alarm, weather panel, and calendar events accordingly as well. I'll show you what they do offer. You can change back to analog or digital. You can bulge your hours or minutes. You can show the AM PM indicators and you can change font specifically. So some pretty nice options in here. Uh, you can in fact enable the weather display um, which will roughly be right around here in your status bar. You do have to enable uh, this option in your interface settings. I'll go over that in a minute. Uh, you do also have calendar events, and you can set that up accordingly and go through the list of options available. So some really nice stuff in the interface section. Uh, you do have also navigation, and you can enable or disable the navigation bar down here at the bottom. A lot of people are worried about screen burn-in, especially with AMOLED screens. So you can adjust the height of this bar or you can disable it completely and use a third-party navigation type app. Um, I current, currently use Pi controls in case you're interested and I will put that in my description. Uh, you also have the gesture anywhere and the app circle bar. The gesture anywhere will allow you the ability to put gestures on the screen and it will open up the certain applications according to those gestures. So as you saw, I just put in a C, which is basically short for calculator. And you can go in here and you can add specific apps and go from there. So if you want to add anything crazy, you can do so. Most of my apps aren't coming up at the moment, but you can go in there and set things accordingly and put gestures on them. And it's it's pretty cool. I don't really use it, but it, it's it's pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie. And you can change the height of, or the trigger width, the position, um, the height, and you can go from there and enable or disable it from that. You can also use an app circle bar, which is really, really cool. You can go in here and select which apps you want specifically. I'm just going to select some real quick. Um, just throw them in there. And uh, basically when you hit this, it's going to pull up a little menu or a little pop-up bar. And you can go in here and scroll through your apps. It's just a really cool way if you don't want to have your home screen cluttered or if you don't want to go into the app drawer all the time. So you just have another 
you know, option to pull up that stuff. And same thing, you can adjust the bar or the trigger area accordingly. So that's a pretty cool feature that you'll find in navigation. Now, in terms of the status bar, there's a lot of stuff in here as well. You have your quick toggles that you can pull down. So if you do the, you know, old school method one touch, it's going to be just notifications. If you do two touch, it will be toggles. But here you can turn off the quick to pull down or you can actually toggle it between right or left. So if I do left, it will pull down the toggles right away and just notifications on that left and you can change that accordingly. Now you do have some options to choose from on your smart pull down and you can disable it from the lock screen if you wish and you don't want people tinkering with your toggles during the locks. You also have brightness control and you can adjust that up here at the top of the status bar. You have double tap to sleep. So if you tap anywhere on the status bar, it will put your device to sleep. Double tap to wake also works and you can do that anywhere on the screen. You have a notification ticker. The show weather will only be working. Like if you go back into your interface and you go to your weather panel and you set all this up, you won't see it until you toggle that weather panel. So you have to go in here and actually enable it to see it because you won't see it now. It's gone. So you will have to enable that show weather and able to show it and it won't work until you soft reboot or reboot the device and it will go into effect. You do have a show notification count that you can enable or disable accordingly. And as you can see up here, you can show your network traffic monitor. You can disable it completely. You can show outgoing, incoming, or both. And you can disable or enable it. You can use specific bits or bytes. And you can set up an update interval timing and you can auto hide it based on inactivity thresholds. So once it reaches that, it will actually show it. You can change the color. So it will display red or whichever color you choose. So that's very cool that you can go in there and customize those options. Now you also have this clock up here and you can disable that completely or you can change the colors accordingly. And you can also get crazy on alignment. You can center it up over here in the center instead of all the way on the right. You can add AMs or PMs and you can make them small or normal. You can also put a date if you wish. And you can make it a smaller font or a normal font. You can also get case sensitive. You can do lowercase or uppercase. And you can even go into date format and change the format of the time completely, almost unlimitedly. Uh, you can even put in a custom Java format. So the options are really almost endless in those regards. So pretty cool stuff there with the clock alignment and the clock settings. And last but not least in the status bar is the battery sti the, the status and the style. Excuse me. Uh, you do have the icon, the normal battery look. You can also go into a portrait battery. You can also go into a circle, which is one of my personal favorites, or just the percentage itself. Or you can just altogether hide it and not show a battery at all. And you can also adjust where the battery percentage is located. You can put it next to it where the clock is located. You can disable it like stock Android, or you can actually put it inside the icon, which is what I like, especially with the battery icon and circle type. Uh, styles. So that's pretty cool in terms of the status bar menu. The last but not least is advanced. And in advanced, you can actually enable or disable the ad blocker, which will disable those annoying ads on all of the apps that you use and what have you. So really, really great features in the liquid smooth menu section. You also have performance menus, which is going to adjust your kernel and your clock rates, your governor settings, your IO schedulers, and you can adjust this based on boots. Um, you can go in here and get some pretty crazy stuff as you'll see. You know, all your cores are active or not active, and you can adjust your cores specifically. So some pretty great stuff there. Um, it will depend on which kernel you are using, obviously, and which methods you want to use on that specific kernel. Uh, you also have a privacy menu, and you can turn on privacy guards. You can manage applications, and based on your personal data, if you don't want them accessing that specific information, you can go in here and disable things. You can even set it by default to 
autom automatically enable when uh, new apps are installed or downloaded. You have a blacklist feature, so you can blacklist phone numbers or certain people you don't want to call you, uh, which is very nice, and you can get pretty specific and filter notifications and what have you as well in privacy settings. You also have the buttons menu, which is very nice. Now, backlit is going to come, I think, enabled by default. You want to disable that if you are on a Nexus 6 because obviously you don't have capacitive buttons. Now, if you are using the device in landscape mode and you are using the navigation bar, you can change it up and put it on left-handed mode. So you can change the navigation bar to go from left or right in landscape. So that's a pretty nice little feature you can use. You can end the calls or end phone calls with your power button. Uh, you can enable them by hitting the home button, but we don't have a home button per se, like a capacitive home button, so I don't know if that's going to be very useful. Uh, you can enable and do some pretty crazy stuff with these short uh, press actions, long press actions, based on their information there. You can wake up the device uh, based on the volume buttons. You can switch up your volume rocker. So if you change your screen into landscape mode, you will invert the volume up and down basically. Uh, so if you're watching like a video or a movie or playing a game in landscape, you can make it invert the volume rockers accordingly to change your sound level. So that's pretty interesting. You also have display options and you can go in here and disable immersive mode messages if you want. You can change up some toast animations. You have a nice little list of options there. Um, the only other thing I see different is the lift to wake, the device, and rotation. You can set it to 180 degrees if you want that option, or you can disable it altogether. And that is in the display options. Um, the other thing is you can get 45 seconds with this ROM specifically. Uh, most times you have 15, 30, uh, 1 minute, 2 minutes, etc. But you can set it right in the middle of that sweet spot, 45 seconds. I like that. And you do have the volume rocker wake. We saw that earlier, but um, that option is there. And you can wake it up on charge. So you can enable or disable those. That is in display. So we're getting down to the finishing here. And uh, last but not least, we have sounds. And you can go in here. It has a liquid smooth sound right at the top. And you can disable the camera shutter sounds and safe headset volume sounds. And we all know how annoying that is when you put headphones on and you're trying to crank them all the way up and it tells you, you know, hey, you're going to blow your ears out. You can disable that completely. And you can also disable the camera shutter sound in case you're trying to be super sneaky with some pictures. Uh, they will give you a warning message about being illegal in some areas, but most of you aren't going to pay attention to that. You do have volume rocker music controls, which will adjust the tracks if you hold down the volume buttons. You can seek forward or backwards, which is pretty cool. You have media controls, and you also have less frequent notification sounds and a list of options there. So some pretty great stuff in the sound options. Everything else is pretty standard. You do get a list, quite a list of notifications and sounds, ringtones with Liquid Smooth. I like that. There is a lot of options here. Uh, most ROMs are very minimal, so you do get a lot of different sounds. Uh, last but not least, I think I just said that, but there is actually one more thing, and that is system profiles. You can go in here and disable things specifically based on your profile, so you can actually use certain toggles and set specific limitations accordingly. Instead of going in and randomly setting them manually all the time, you can just go boom, you know, I'm at home, I want these things to work or I'm at work and I want these things to work. So you can go in there and set that accordingly. Pretty great stuff on the fly. And everything else I have pretty much gone over. The only other thing I think there was if you go into developer options and mess with your animation toggles is you do get a couple more features in here. You get the uh, 0.25 or 0.75 and they integrated that as well, which is pretty nice. I like to have very fast animation speeds, but that's pretty much liquid smooth in a nutshell. It's a pretty nice ROM, especially if you like dark material type themes. It's going to chew up a little bit less battery life. It is running the latest version of Android, and it does work pretty great on the Nexus 6. I don't have any issues whatsoever with force closing or any kind of errors or bugs in general. 
now that I figured out the force close issues, and that is in fact the kernel. You can in fact run Franco kernel. It is completely compatible with this specific ROM. Um, if you are a fan of the Sensei, uh, or Sensei um, kernel, I don't know if that works, but you can tr give it a try and uh, go from there. But hope this video helps you guys. If you are interested in checking out Liquid Smooth, definitely give my video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this, if you like this recording format. I did actually record everything on the Nexus 6, including the microphone, the sound quality. Uh, might be a little bit lower than most, but that is because I don't have the option to go in there and adjust it. Uh, but anyways, guys, until next time and until the next ROM or case review or what I have in store, peace.